romantic theater. Let's do this. Let's do some romance for these folks. a hand on the gun you can't trust anyone I was so sure what I needed was more tried to shoot out the sun and that is new music from Muscle Shoals area singer Jason Isbell Hello, welcome into the Y'all Show. It's time now on the show that's all about the South with John Rawl to welcome in our Nashville Music Insider, Precious Harris, here onto the show. Precious is with Nashville Music Line. The website is nashvillemusicline.com, and she's also a music career development consultant. And let me tell you, if you're looking to get into the music business and you're needing an extra hand, you're needing an extra helper, you need somebody that's got a lot of experience, Precious Harris is your gal. And we're going to learn a lot more about what she does on Music Row as we welcome her in in a very historic option right here on the Y'all Show. We're welcoming in Precious via video link for the very first time. Hello, let's go to Music Row in Nashville. And our gal, Precious Harris, is standing by. Hello, Precious. Hello. And uh, just a surprise, I thought it was going to be tape like our radio show has been. <laughs> so they got to put on makeup and fix my hair. Oh, precious. I thought it was going to be taped, but it's okay. I'm good. I've just never, ever did a Facebook Live, ever. I've well, done a TikTok, but that wasn't really live. That was, like, posted. So there, there, but, um, There's a country music band called Little Texas, and I think their first or second song they ever came out was, was called There's a First Time for Everything. And Precious, yep, right. there's a first time for everything with you being on the Y'all Show right now. Video-wise, hello, you look great. Well, thank you. What are we looking at behind us? That uh, right there is the Million Dollar Quartet picture I got at Memphis when we were on the road with the Bellamy Brothers and we got to run by Sun Studios and I grabbed it (laughs) in the gift shop. And then the one here is the Everly Brothers when they were 9 and 11 years old. They're my Kentucky cousins. And their grandmother and my grandmother were first cousins. So... Sort of kin like Kentucky, you know, but the trees don't fork. But we're close enough that I can say we're kin, K-I-N. Uh, we, we, we got it for sure. Precious, we're going to talk more about what you got going on, but let's talk about the artist we just heard coming in from this commercial break, and that was Jason Isbell, who, again, grew up around Florence, Alabama, and he's got some new music, and it's a new project with the 400-unit a new album called Reunions. What more can you tell us about Jason Isbell, the rocker turned country alternative artist, I guess? Yeah, it's actually, uh, he actually recorded the record across from my uh, former office. And it's at the historical RCA building. Dave has a studio down there. And Dave was actually brought, the producer, Dave Cobb, was actually brought to Nashville by Waylon Jennings and his, and his wife, uh, so Jesse Coulter. Uh, so, you know, that's his history. And, uh, but we were doing a round at a, at a industry round, almost like a roast, but it really wasn't about talking about a lady named Miss Hazel. And they were talking about her career and everything. And, and of course, Dave came up and talked about how he first met her and everything. And that's when he actually found out, we all found out in the room, how he got to Nashville. It was pretty cool because at the time I had just got through doing the liner notes for the Waylon Jennings um, Lost Sessions in Nashville and uh, for Country Rewind that was going to Cracker Barrel. And it was so funny, I'm sitting there and I literally had just finished the last word three hours before of the Waylon Jennings liner notes for the CD. So I went up to Dave and told him, he goes, oh, I'd love to have that CD. He said, that family means so much to me. And I said, well, I will bring it to you. So I brought it to the studio the next day and he was very glad to get it. So it was pretty cool because he got one of the very, very first copies as soon as I got it in I brought it right to him and how much is Jason Isbell as I, I kind of was confused when I just said it here he's a rocker is he now a country artist an alternative artist what exactly 
What category do we put Jason Isbell in? Americana. You okay. don't know what to do with them. That's a joke on Music Girl. You put them in Americana. But okay. Americana is like one of my favorite forms of music. And everybody, if you think about it, um, you know, that goes at Americana. Jason was at the awards. You've got the former lead singer, Lev Zeppelin, was at the awards. you got Allison Krauss. So it's a very eclectic mixture of music row. And you got Webb Wilder, who was a huge rock band in the uh, late 80s and the early 90s. We used to go see when I was in uh, Western Kentucky University, WKU Hilltoppers in Bowling Green, uh, Picasso's, which was like one of the top 10 college clubs. And, uh, but it was just, it's just a wonderful mix of the old and the new and the upcoming and the Americana. Okay. Well, while you're. And the only problem. Their awards this year, I want to say it's the same exact night as the ACM Awards. Oh, okay. And I think it's September the 16th, I think. Yeah, but you'll Google ACM 2020, and they have moved it. And how they end up on the same day when there's 20, when there's 30 days in September is like, you know, but it's okay. I'm thinking they're taping some of the stuff on the Ryman before the awards get started or like a couple of days before so hopefully it will be smooth sailing trying to maneuver the americana music conference and the americana awards tonight and the acms for the first time they have ever been in nashville so i'm excited all right now the acm awards are not going to be held at the ryman they just have segments okay. that are being taped at the ryman so just want to make that clear one footnote for jason isbell's defense i gotta rush in here after you're showing off your wku hilltopper pride i think i'm right on this jason isbell you went to western kentucky he's a north alabama lion so way to go una by the way precious a trivia question for you i know you know the answer what other country music star of the last two decades is an alumnus of the university of north alabama in florence um, hang on. There may be Is other ones. This, this guy was kind of a big a country deal. Country star. He's a country. He he's a country star. He hasn't had a hit in several years, but he had a bunch for a while. And the 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 tease for you is, although he went to UNA, he's a native of a town across the border in Tennessee. His hometown is Savannah, Tennessee. Oh, Daryl Worley? Yes, Daryl Worley. <laughs> and I think he got a degree. You said hometown, I, I knew that. I think his degree from UNA might be in like chemical engineering or something really pretty impressive, to be honest with you. Daryl Worley is an impressive guy, regardless of what degree he got there at the University and of North Carolina. And he's six Alabama. foot five. Well, that's, his one, boots on, he's six foot six. that's one of the things I was kind of hinting at there. Hey, speaking of trivia questions, we've got a trivia question for you, Precious. You cannot answer this, but... All of you watching us or listening to us right now, chime in with the answer. And if you're the lucky person that, that gives us the right answer, we, we'll do something special for you. Before we get out of here, we'll get Precious to answer the question here on the Y'all Show and our Nashville Music Line Report with Precious Harris. And the trivia question is, it was nine years ago right now, Precious, that the song You and Tequila was number one on the charts. And I want to know who sang that song. And we'll have that answer coming up in just a few minutes. And Scout's Honor, everybody, you can't use the Google. you got to know it. you got to get on Facebook right now and, and type out, Precious is doing a good job telling us, yeah, you got to key it in. No cheating. No cheating. No, your cheating heart can't cheat on these trivia questions. But we'll have that answer coming up in just a few here as we visit with Precious Harris on the Y'all Show. Okay, Precious, let's talk about charlie daniels i think you've got some news about charlie daniels and i'm excited about cdb it's charlie and you know his band has been together when we went to the country music hall of fame when there was a special presentation for him they were naming the people in his company and every one of them had been there 25 years or more i think he said the same manager for 40 something years it's it's been a while uh, but anyway but his one of his band members, um, Taz, who'd been with him forever, was killed in a car wreck, actually on the way to a show here in Nashville. Um, and I interviewed him, sweetest man ever, and his sweet wife, who's a, who actually helped me out in some music business things. She's a music business um, attorney. But uh, he's still got Charlie Hayward and James Stroud and Billy and uh, Billy Crane 
were part of his band that came in and did. Now, James Stroud, believe it or not, he used to run a label called Giant. He also has several credits on Grammy-nominated records and country records and of uh, some of the rock records that came out of the 60s and the 70s as a keyboard player. Um, but anyway, but they were all gathering together, and I got to see the video last night. You've got Randy Owen, and it makes you realize when I saw Randy, I'm like the first time I ever saw Randy live was in Bowling Green at WKU, Alabama tour, and Janie Freaky was opening up for them. And now I see him with gray hair and uh, signs of age, and it hasn't changed. Ever though he sings, it's the same as he was singing to me in 1980, 81, something like that, in front of, you know, 10,000 people. So, but uh, anyway, but. He's got Colin Ray and, of course, Ray Stevens, but he, he's got some good ones. You've just got to see it, the quarantine video, for you to understand how really cool it is. All right. James Stroud, as you mentioned, who had giant uh, giant records back with artists like Doug Supernall, Daryl Worley. Not Daryl mm -hmm. Worley, Daryl Singletary was yeah, an artist. Uh, Clay Walker, Clay, yes. I think it's Clay Walker. Clay Walker was certainly a, produced, I think. He may produced, have produced them. Clay. And the, the thing about James Stroud that stood out for me, Precious, was James Stroud, a great producer. His background, though, was a drummer, and that's what he got oh, a lot that's of right, credit for. He was a big I knew drummer. It was an instrument. <laughs> yeah, drums, that's arguably an instrument. But yeah, James Stroud, quite a great sound in, in all those records if you go back and find any of the I, stuff. I know who the keyboard player was. Who's Tony that? Brown, produced George okay. Strait. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. all, right, all right, Precious, let's move on to talk about uh, something that I, I think you can confirm this. Um, can, can you copy that? Yes. C can you copy that? Copy 10-4. <laughs> no, copy that is the brand new effort from Sarah Evans, the Missouri oh. native. Have you heard about copy that? It's the first time that we're going to have some new Sarah Evans music in quite some time. Yes, yeah, she actually started her own label. Uh, she's got Dixie's Midnight Runners, Come On Eileen, a couple of other stuff. I've not got to hear the album. I have got the link. Uh, I did put it in the press uh, in my in my blog on National Music Line. Uh, you know, but I remember how, uh, when my my boss at the time, songwriter, was writing with a guy named Kim Williams. Kim Williams used to hire her. And you know, Kim Williams, her ain't going down to the sun comes up, and he's just Google Kim Williams. Hall of Fame songwriter. And, you'll and, see and by the way, Kim Williams song. is a male. A, yes. A boy named and his Kim. his daughter, Kim, yes. And his daughter is a gorgeous redhead. And uh, but, and but she's got a couple of songs on Gar's box set of the decades stuff. Anyway, back to uh, Sarah Evans. I remember her singing our demos in the early 90s really? where she got her deal with RCA. I'm still yeah, stuck on. Yeah, she was like the most demand de demo singer. Sure, I'm still stuck on her very first effort on RCA. They put out a vinyl, and she had that was back when she was wearing the the uh, neck neckerchiefs around her neck. Yeah. And just yeah. wow, that's all I can say. But she's in the studio now, and she's got this new copy that effort, and we're watching some video of her in the studio, and you can find more of this on her YouTube channel for Sarah Evans, and. The video, for whatever reason, they intentionally kind of made it look like it was something from the 1950s, it looks like there, with the, the effects they use. So don't adjust your screens, y'all. But Sarah Evans, some great music. And boy, she's had some great records through the years. I'm looking forward to having some new Sarah Evans music. Like I said, knowing her, uh, she was in town singing demos. Trisha Yearwood was in town. Um, in the early 90s, there was something, just some major magic going on on Music Row. You know, you had a new label pop up called Arist, Aristo, uh, Aristo Records. And then you had a media company called Aristo. <laughs> and they were working with a country radio seminar. And it was just a magical time. And 1993, 94, Wade Hayes came to town with Johnny Lee playing his guitar at the place called Gillies before everything went kapoof in construction. Um but it was just a wonderful time back then. You know, John Michael got signed to Atlantic. They signed Tracy Lawrence. It was like a magical time. A lot of the superstars we know today were all signed in the 90s, 90, 91, 92. Mm -hmm. A magical I time mean, in country magical music. Magical time. And we're looking for... My favorite, Neil McCoy, one of my favorite entertainers of Neil McCoy. Love him. I love interning for him and John Michael. 
and uh, Confederate Railroad, and who else was on there? Let's see, John Michael, Tracy Lawrence. You talking McCoy. about Atlanta Records back in the day? Yeah, I was the intern, and those were like our four go-to artists at the time. I don't know. Um, I don't know if this guy predated your arrival at Atlantic Records in Nashville, but a guy named Billy Joe Royal. Uh, he may have been pre. He was not there. I think the one I remember, beside the two boys that became really superstars, was a guy named Martin Del Rey. Oh yeah, Lily's White Lies. Love that song. Yes, and he was. I, we had a girl. Their and, last name was Lee. Beautiful brunette. I can't even remember her name. Isn't that awful? Uh, but you have to realize I turned 58 Wednesday, so I'm happy getting my birthday, voice. Precious Harris. We're all excited for you on that. And since you've turned 58. Maybe you can be in this St. Jude Marathon or maybe give me an update at least on the St. Jude Marathon and other things going on in Music City as Nashville is slowly, slowly, slowly riots aside trying to come back to life after the coronavirus. It is, and we are uh, we're, we're slowly getting back. Uh, I think a lot of the things, there's people that's canceled the tour for the whole year, Taylor Swift, Thomas Rhett. You know, we got a lot of changes. Um, been praying for the city a lot the last 60 days. And, uh, but uh, it's, you know, we've got to remember that it is not just Nashville, but it's a global thing. So we've got to try to come back the safest way we can um, with music, with our lifestyle, with our everyday life, with our home, our family, our jobs, our work. So it, it, it's completely affects every single person in our city and live music is the lifeline of our city as far as the entertainment our tourism and uh, you know they canceled cma fest it's never ever been done even when they had tornadoes running around downtown they didn't cancel it uh, so you know just getting back to normal or semi-normal which may not be for six months to a year but we got a lot of good things to look forward to in 2021 thomas Rhett's tour Taylor's new tour, Kenny Chesney's new tour, some of the other ones are going back out. But the best part is about this, if you look at the silver lining, is all the, um, and I put it on my blog, nationalmusicline.blog.com, but I put in all the live Facebook lives like Warner Wednesday and Garth Brooks G Studio Live and just things like that. You can actually see your artists up close and personal that you may have not got to see while they were on stage because you said, you know, 10,000 people around you. When you're in your room or in your, on your computer, on your iPad, and you're watching Garth live, it's more intimate. And I think it's a really good way that the artists have able to stay connected to their fans, which is the most important people to them. You know, ticket sales, CD sales, fan base, you know, driven. Fans drive the artist's career. And hopefully the artists don't forget that. You know, Garth never does. He's always known to stand in line. Sometimes I think he stood in line for 24 hours straight. And, um, met everybody at Fanfare that year, and no one's ever did that again. No one's ever wrote that record. I don't think they will, because he's the G-Man. He's the G-Man, and speaking of great videos that you can find, some of your great artists out there these days, we're right now today on the Y'all Show, visiting via video with Precious Harris right off of Music Row in Nashville, Tennessee. Precious, let's talk a little cowboy, if you don't mind. You like cowboys? You know I love cowboys. I'm okay. sort of connected to cowboy being an FFA girl, but Sort of, sort of, you know. Well, I want to know about this fella, Colt, K-O-L-T, Colt Barber. Tell me more. Colt is a, a real cowboy, and I got to know him about two years ago. And uh, and I know him not only as an artist, but also as a songwriter and producing his own records. And he's got a tour coming up, and he's working on taking the the rodeo action and with a live country music and bringing it together. He's booked at the rodeos that are being rescheduled. He has actually booked 13 of those cities. Um, I mean, I'm excited. I know that they're trying to figure out how to make it work um, because some of them um, are working to do the spanning out of six feet. So hopefully he can get it work and get it together. But he's uh, if you get a chance, He's got a really deep bass voice. He reminds me of uh, a Josh Turner. If he was a if he was a cowboy hat, it reminds me just that deep bass voice. I just love it. But he, he's a good guy. I've met him and got to work with him, and I can't say enough nice things about him. But you really got to go see his website because it's just to hear his music. 
very traditional. He don't play no. He don't, he don't play no. I think I'm country. I think I'm rock and roll. He's very much straight down the middle. American cowboy. American Cowboy, again, you can check out that music and more. Just go again, follow Precious Nashville Music Line. And Precious, you have helped a lot of people out throughout the years trying to essentially get tuned in to how the music business works and more. And if you don't mind, just give us a quick rundown again to remind us about what you offer up-and-coming artists, songwriters, right on Music Row. And don't think that you can't reach out to Precious. If you think you might have what it takes to make it on Music Row, Precious is here to help you. How can you help people, Precious? Well, I'm my nickname is the Information Station and Mama <laughs> P. Yeah. Because I have kids come to me that they want to be an actor or actress, and I know what to do to help them get to that bit and what to do, because that's what my husband did. And uh, unknown to me, he worked doing that when I was in the same room while he was being the waiter in uh, John Anderson's uh, video. And we didn't realize we were in the same room at the time. Uh, anyway, I try to help you to keep from making really bad mistakes. It's going to mess up your career. A couple of things. I don't make you sign a contract with me. Um, I love to meet with you first and to see how I can help you. I know I can some way, somehow aspect, either it's helping you get your, with ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, which is your performing rights organization, which is your employer, basically, to pay you as a songwriter and a publisher. Um, some people think uh, they've been told they can't have their own publishing company. That's not so true. You can have your own publishing uh, company, and it's very easy, and I do ask the kids that I meet, what I call my music kids, because I really nurture them and try to help them to make sure they don't make any mistakes. I'm like a music mom with 40 years in the business. Um, the biggest thing is I love to introduce them to information like BMI's got their things that they can help writers with. And then ASCAP uh, has their straight talk. I'm hoping that will resume fast. Mm -hmm. Everybody is willing to help. You just got to know where to look, how to ask for it, and how to present yourself in a professional way. There's a joke that said, you, you want to leave Music City really fast, give somebody a CD, <laughs> you know. And I do etiquette, you know, how to meet someone. If we're going into a meeting. We do a mock-up meeting with a record executive. If you're meeting a label executive, meeting a publishing executive, what to do, how to get ready for it. Um, matter of fact, today I'm working on pitching an act to a label. And the website, I went to look at it, and it was had – me and um, had a title and it had Christmas berries around it. I'm like, we might want to update that website. Yeah. Uh, so I made a little note of things that has to be done before presentation. And I do a uh, media training with one of the top uh, media training ladies in Nashville who has, inter who has interviewed over 5,000 celebrities, uh, including Paul McCartney or Sir Paul McCartney and uh, Keith Urban, you name it, George Strait, um, Shannon McCombs. And uh, so I have people to help you get to your next level. I have vocal coaches that do a special discount for me because it's not about learning how to sing. It's making sure you're singing correctly, especially if you're singing 300 dates a year when you get rolling. And there's been several people who didn't realize it. And over the years in the 90s, we had Patty Loveless and Faith Hill and Sarah Evans. Um, I'm pretty sure we're all at the Vanderbilt Vocal Clinic and had to go vocal rest because they went – banged out of the you know the barn and went superstars and you know singing 300 dates a year your voice might not handle it so there's certain things and if you're having issues um help you with skin care and etiquette how to present your business card so anything you need in the music business i have a list of 67 things that i can help you with man including putting impressive. your team together I, yeah i didn't know it was 67 i knew it was a lot and <laughs> Take it from me for what it's worth, y'all. I've known Precious Harris for almost 30 years, and she's a great friend, and she's honest. She just told you she doesn't necessarily sign you up for a lifetime contract. She's going to first talk to you, and then perhaps y'all can work something out. And this is for you if you're a, a wannabe singer or songwriter. If you're the parent or know somebody that wants to be a singer or songwriter, all you got to do is get in touch with Precious, and you don't know what the future may hold for you. Precious, what's the best way for people to reach out to you? Uh, Precious Writer at Hotmail. My name's spelled funny. But uh, just Google NashvilleMusicLine.com. 
um, I will tell you, I always encourage the parents to attend if your parents are close by. Mm -hmm. If not at the first meeting, I always like to have the parents at least either on an audio, on the phone, or on Skype, or some kind of a, a message thing so they can see me and meet me. And uh, because I'm not just saying this, but I really do believe that you've got to have a, a support of your family and a concrete foundation if you're coming here. It's just an extra support. If you don't have that, I literally, the people in my office are like a family. They're best friends. They sing back up on each other's albums. They play guitar for each other. They go in the studio. I got one that's producing two of my, my female artists. Um, and one of them, we just hit, I think, 20,000 views on her, uh, I mean, 20,000 streams on one of her songs called, uh, uh, her name is Meg Riley, on The Boy in the Bottle. And uh, it's a long time coming. So we're pretty excited about that. You know, and it's, she's independent with not a lot of money behind promotion. So I always try to find good ways to help the clients and my music kids promote their music with just a very limited budget. You do it, and you do it oh so well, Precious Harris. Thank you again for sharing what you do. I've had a lot of people ask me, now, what exactly does she do? And, you know, now I don't feel so dumb because you do 67 different things. I swear, and I've got several people who can testify to that. Like, Buddy Jewel was one of the very first people I came to Nashville that when we met, he was actually singing demos for um, a label years ago that uh, had been restarted from being gone from the 65 and uh, he was singing our demos, and I got to meet him. So it's, it's pretty cool, you know, just to watch people grow up. You know, I remember interning my very first day. I walked in and said, and I didn't know you were supposed to have an appointment because my mom had died, and I was sort of on my own, and I was like, I'm going to Nashville. And uh, so I knocked on the door, and uh, it was a really crazy time because they had been open about a year, and they didn't really have an intern. And I was... 10 years older than the normal intern because I took it, you know, I had taken, excuse me, a, uh, you know, a kidney transplant and got all well and everything. And so I just decided I'm going to Nashville. I knocked on the door and he sat me down and asked me questions and I answered him. And he said, you're hired. He said, but you've got to be a student of Belmont. That is the prerequisites to be an internal music role for a label or anything. So uh, I remember him loaning me the money for 48 hours to register at Belmont. And my dad went to the bank and borrowed the money for me to go to Belmont for a semester so I could work with the label. And that label was b &A, which is now Sony Entertainment. So I've been lucky to be on the ground floor at some of the big changes in the early 90s, you know, and watch the people I used to drink coffee with at Longhorn, like Daryl Worley and John Michael, you know, become country stars. And it's just a wonderful ride. And I'm lucky enough, prior to its demise many years ago, to have a few meals that's, with you there. That's at, how we met. At, well, we didn't yeah. meet there, I don't think, but we went there a bunch, at Longhorn. And, yeah, we did. And yeah, we, we met at Atlantic, I think, when I was interning at Atlantic. Yeah, yeah but uh, they had a great burger, I think, you liked there at that Longhorn, just off of Music Road in Nashville. Precious, we got to get out of here, but we got to answer that trivia question. And that trivia question is, it was, I think, nine years ago today, the number one song was you and tequila and miss precious harris you referenced bna a few minutes ago i believe i believe it was on bna this guy first had a lot of chart success who yes, was the, capricorn and then bna yeah capricorn he had a little success but he had his yeah, first well. big hits when he was on bna who sang you and tequila and it's a actually a trick question because two people kind of sort of sang on that song it was uh, Kenny Chesney, who his manager and I interned together at Atlantic oh. when we met, uh, Clint Hyam and uh, and Grace Potter. How about that? And that was a really good match. I wasn't for sure when I heard they were doing the duet how it would come out, but it turned out really good. Very good, very good. Also, this week marks the 51st anniversary of Galveston being atop the chart for the great Glenn Campbell, well, another great singer that we lost just a few years ago. And... What a great song there. Precious, thank you very much for coming on the Y'all Show and your Nashville music line. It's been a real treat to see you here. You too, and it's good to be back. And uh, everybody have a blessed day and just make it a wonderful red, white, and blue day. All right, everybody, our Nashville music insider, Precious Harris. And that will wrap up our Nashville music line report. 
and go to nationalmusicline.com for more info on everything Music Row courtesy of Precious Harris. Until we see y'all again, John Rawls signing off of this, the Y'all Show Nashville Music Line Report.